high or so you will be familiar with the different types of storages which are available in browsers like local storage and session storage but today we will be taking a look at a different kind of storage called cache storage which is available in browsers the local storage and the session storage have some size limitations so that they only allow data to be stored somewhere around the range of 5 mb to 10 mb in our browsers but the cache storage can be used for storing large amount of data especially static data which will not be updated regularly so the most common use case for the cache storage is in case of service workers so the service workers as you know act as a proxy on the browser side so that the first time when a resource like javascript or image is requested from the browser the service worker intercepts the request and when the actual response is received from the network the response is stored in the cache storage and in the subsequent calls the service worker will fetch this response from the cache storage instead of actually making the network call so in this way service worker speeds up our application and also it can be used for supporting offline mode so this is most common use case of cache storage so we will take a look at how we can make use of the cache storage api programmatically in our application without making use of a service worker there are two interfaces available which are related to the cache storage one is the cache storage interface which basically represents a collection of cache objects which is present within our browser so this cache objects will have their corresponding names which will be unique we can view the cache storage of our application by making use of the developer tools if you go to the application tab you can see here a section called cache storage and all the data which we store within the cache storage we will be able to see based on the domain now if we go back to the cache storage interface it has different methods like delete has keys match and open so we will take a look at all this through a sample application so here i have created an angular 16 application so what i will be doing is i have created a cache service so if you go to the cache service code it's basically a wrapper around the http client get method so what it does is when we call this method called get cached or fetch along with a url first it will check within our cache storage whether that url entry is already cached in case it is cached it will take it from there and return it if it is not found it will make an actual http request and then store the response within the cache storage and then return the data so now let's go through each of this code so that you can understand how we achieve the same the cache storage object which we see here it is available as a global variable so if we go to our console we can see that there is a global object called caches which is actually the cache storage so as of now the cache storage is empty we can ensure that by making use of the caches dot keys method and all these methods are asynchronous so we need to await it so once we await the response you can see that as of now the cache storage is empty and it does not have any keys within our application we are making use of a convenience method called caches dot match which basically checks whether an entry exist for a particular url and you can also pass the cache name if you know the cache name as in this case so in this case i am checking whether i have a cache name called my cache within my cache storage and whether that cache contains an entry for this particular url so in case i do not know the cache name we can omit this parameter and directly call this so it will do a global search in all the caches within our cache storage now in our application what i am doing is i am making a call for this particular sample url 
let's see what happens when we run this application so i am reloading this application now you can see that initially the log came like no response found in cache and it is saying like it is about to fetch the actual data from the network so if you go to the network tab you can see that the actual http call was made and the response is received so once this response is received so if you go to the code you can see that first it does a match in the caches and the cache name which is expected is my cache so as you previously saw there is no entry with the my cache name so what happens is that the response which we receive from this caches dot match is that it is undefined so it's basically comes here and this is the log which we saw now so once we do not have a cached response we directly go call the http dot get method and when we receive the response what we are doing is we saw the method caches dot open so it basically opens the particular cache name which we pass here so since we do not have this cache name it will create an entry here and then since it is an asynchronous operation it will pass the cache instance here and now we come to the second interface which is available for cache storage that is the cache interface so this is basically a single cache entry within the cache storage so here it can have multiple methods like add add or delete keys match match all and put so the most basic operation which we can do for a particular cache is put put basically it adds an entry within the cache for a network uh, request and response so the key will be the url and the response will be stored within the cache storage so here what we are doing is we are using the cache dot put we are passing the first parameter as the url and the response which we receive from the network we are storing that response within the cache and once we do that we log the message called response stored in cache so if we go to our console you can see the data which we received from the network and the response stored in cache is shown so now we can verify that within our application if you go to the cache storage you can see here an entry called my cache which is for this particular domain and within that you can see an entry with the url which we saw earlier and the corresponding response so you can see that the entire response is cached here along with the headers and the response the request and the response headers and we also have the actual data from that particular network response so now when we do a refresh of the application a second time i am doing a refresh you can see that no actual network call was made but if we go to the console you can see that the actual data is retrieved so how this was done is in the second time when we call this cache dot match with the particular url it actually finds a response and in case we find a response we just return that response or the data from that response using the json method and that's it we will be able to function properly using the cache data this is the main advantage of using the cache storage and the functionality which is mainly used for service workers now let us take a look at the other methods which are available in the cache interface another method is the add method this is basically a wrapper over the put method like it does a functionality like first it will do a fetch for that url and if that response is fine it will automatically add the response within the cache storage using the cache dot put this is a convenient method in which case you need to do a fetch and put you can just make use of the add method similarly the add all you can pass multiple urls and all those requests will be cached together and the delete method as the name suggests you can pass a key for a particular url 
or request and you can call the cache dot delete it will delete that entry the keys it is similar to the keys which we saw for the cache storage here you can list all the urls or request which we have in that particular cache and the match is again similar if you want to do a search of a request url within a particular cache you can do this and match all is again multiple urls you can pass so these are the main methods which are available within the cache interface so one main advantage of using the cache storage is that there is no size limit on the cache storage and it basically depends on the browser caching size so whatever size is reserved for the caching purpose in the browsers that much will be available for the cache storage as well so hope you are able to get a good idea about how we can utilize the cache storage see you soon thank you